Hey, hi, how you doing? This is the Gamertron, and welcome to the Gamertron Show. Call of Duty. Call of Duty, Call of Duty. Cod, cod, cod. The most popular first-person shooter franchise in the world, and one of the most selling games of all time. It's beloved by many, but hated by just as many as well. And today I have two very special videos for you. My top 5 reasons why Call of Duty is awesome, and my top 5 reasons why Call of Duty is awful. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a semi-fan of the franchise. I have all three Modern Warfare games, and Black Ops. Every other COD after that, uh, not a big fan of. So keep in mind, you hardcore Call of Duty players, these two top fives, or top ten if you combine the two, are going to be based off my experience playing off the Call of Duty Modern Warfare Trilogy and the first Black Ops, as those are the only Call of Duties I've played and I have no interest in playing any others. But anyway, with that introduction out of the way, let me tell you why Call of Duty is both awesome and awful at the same time. Now here are my top 5 reasons why Call of Duty is awesome. Number 5. Guns. Guns, guns, guns. If you're a firearm aficionado or a fan of weaponry, Call of Duty will scratch that itch if you are looking for a virtual reality version of a real-life firearm. Because about 90% of the weapons from the Call of Duty series, both Modern Warfare Black Ops, are real-life weapons put into the game. They're not based off real-life weapons, they are virtual representations of real firearms. And from both the Modern Warfare Trilogy and Black Ops, there are a ton, a simple ton, of weaponry to choose from. The armaments, the amount of armaments in these games is extensive. You have a lot of guns to play with, and try out, and have fun with, and find your favorites. Not just that, each of them is well animated, with good sound design, awesome reload animations, they're, almost all of them are useful in combat, of course, everybody will have their own favorites. But if you are a fan of real-life weaponry, real-life firearms put into a virtual world, and then get to have fun, cartoony, crazy action with them, you will definitely have some fun with Call of Duty. Number 4. Worth the $60 price tag. There are many, 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 many video games out there where it is debatable whether a game is worth the $60 price tag, whether it's a multiplayer only game, a single player only game, or just a co-op only game. It is very debatable sometimes with certain games whether or not it is worth the $60 price tag. Call of Duty is actually able to justify its price. It has a single player campaign that is actually quite a few hours long. It has a co-op mode, usually every COD has some sort of co-op mode, whether it be some sort of survival horde mode or co-op challenges. And of course there's the infamous multiplayer, and although I personally do not like Call of Duty multiplayer, I know there are a great many who do and enjoy it, so you've got a lengthy single player, you've got some sort of co-op uh, co mode, whether it be survival or challenges, and you get multiplayer. You get so there's a ton of content in these games. There's a lot to do, which really does justify the $60 price tag and not too many games can do that. So, props to COD for being able to be worthy of that $60. Number 3. There are actually some memorable likable characters in the series. In Call of Duty Black Ops, we have Mason, Woods, and Hudson. While in the Modern Warfare Trilogy, we have the heroes Soap and Price, and of course, that utterly despicable villain, Makarov. The single-player games actually give you some memorable characters that you're curious about where this action-packed plot is going to take them. You grow a connection with these characters because you're constantly spending time with them, chatting with them over the radio, fighting alongside them. They become, uh, like war buddies. You're so used to their company that you can't help but care for them. And come on, some of you, at least some of you, actually felt 
really sad when Soap died. If that was an, a an actual emotional and tragic death scene for a character we played as. That was the character we played as. And they killed him off. That was the character we fought alongside, we play as. And when Soap died, it really did kind of hurt. Even though he wasn't the most well-developed character, because we spent free entire single-player campaigns with him just to see him die like that, it hurts a little. Also, it is the most satisfying thing ever to kill that son of a bitch Makarov. They developed that villain very well, so then when you finally got to the moment, the moment of truth where you got to end that bastard, it was so satisfying to finally kill him. And not too many games can strive you to kill a villain. They make the Makarov so hateable, you gotta kill him. And as for the Black Ops games, it is very fascinating seeing these characters trying to solve the mystery of this Cold War conspiracy. Seeing them go through the motions, seeing them uncover clues, going from location to location, trying to figure out just what the hell is going on. So yeah, props to the Call of Duty campaigns for actually giving us some memorable characters. Number 2, Zombies and Survival. It doesn't matter if you were a Call of Duty hater. You cannot deny, you cannot deny the absolute blast that are the zombie horde modes from Call of Duty World at War and Call of Duty Black Ops and even Call of Duty Black Ops 2 to an extent. And hell, the survival mode in Modern Warfare 3 was also pretty good. The zombie, the zombie horde modes and the survival mode from Modern Warfare are awesome. They're excellent, and they're fun as hell. Hell, even the below-average Call of Duty game that everybody hates, including me, Ghosts, it has a pretty good survival mode where you survive against aliens. I don't know why they even bother with multiplayer, uh, the developers of COD. Just stick to single player and these horde modes, because th these horde modes are great. Zombies from Black Ops is freaking phenomenal. The way you progress through the level, fight hordes and hordes of zombies, the challenge gets more and more difficult. You keep unlocking more and more awesome weapons. You have a bunch of upgrades to use, but you've got to be tactical about them and use them at the right time. With Modern Warfare Survival, you have to be careful what you spend your money on. Which guns are you going to buy? Are you going to save up your money for a rocket launcher or perhaps a machine gun? Are you going to spend your money on bonuses for your character, uh, buying grenades? Are you going to purchase aerial support or perhaps AI troop backup? There's a lot of options and the survival mode can be pretty challenging and fun. And finally, Ghosts Alien Horde Mode Extinction. The one shining beacon of hope and fun in Ghosts. It is next to the horrible single player campaign and the dreadful multiplayer. Alien Extinction stands out as being very fun, very tactical, with aliens that are both memorable and fun to kill. No matter how bad the single player campaign is or the multiplayer, the Call of Duties have somehow, I don't know how, they have mastered survival horde modes. Well done, Call of Duty. Well done. And the number one reason why Call of Duty is awesome? Set pieces. This is at least the number one reason why I play the Call of Duty single player. The set pieces. The set pieces are amazing. They are so well animated, so well crafted, so well paced, so action-packed and adrenaline-fueled. The set pieces that you encounter in the many varied levels of the single-player campaign are th th their action set piece extravaganza masterpieces. They're so memorable, and action-packed, and adrenaline-fueled, and there's fun! The set pieces in the Call of Duty games are fun. Well, they're what make the simplistic, the overly simplistic, and somewhat boring gameplay of Call of Duty, just walking around shooting, no special abilities, or double jumping, or anything like that to keep it, like, remotely interesting or special. It's just you playing as a guy with a gun. The action set pieces are able to raise it above its basic gameplay mechanics and make it an action game masterpiece. You cannot find these explosive, dynamic, well-animated action set pieces anywhere else but the Call of Duty games. Whether it be the very, very cluttered and chaotic turret sections on a helicopter, taking control of a gunship from the air and supporting troops from below, 
Driving a speedboat across dangerous and deadly waters. Bullets and rockets flying everywhere. Explosions and buildings shattering. The set pieces in the Call of Duty single player games are the number one reason to at least give the games a try. Because you cannot find these action-packed, adrenaline-fueled, really, really well-animated set pieces anywhere else. They make the game so much more varied and memorable than if they just made it a corridor shooter with this simplistic gameplay. It would have been the worst thing ever. But these action set pieces, these varied, very varied action set pieces help set the Call of Duty games apart from all other action-packed single-player first-person shooters. And those are my top five reasons why Call of Duty is awesome. Now, it's time for you to watch the top five reasons why Call of Duty is awful. So, please share this video, share it with Call of Duty fans, with other people you know on YouTube. Just share this video around. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button, it really helps. If you want to see more of my content and support me directly, please subscribe. And of course, leave your comments, I love reading comments and reading what you guys think. So, later, and watch Top 10 Reasons Why Call of Duty is Awful.